Welcome back to the Nosebleeds podcast. I'm Ryan Gregware. I'm joined with Sam Davis, Michael Calamari. You know, guys, we have some good today, some bad. I think let's start with the bad. Let's just get it out of the way. Let's rip the bandaid off. <laughs> and obviously that's the New York Yankees. Um, you know, since I was on this podcast last time, it was pretty negative, but there was hope with the Twins and the Phillies coming up and they did not really take care of business the way they should have. They're five and thirteen in the last eighteen. Now they've slipped to one game over five hundred, thirty-three and thirty-two. Now nine back of first in the AL East. You know it keeps swelling. We get later into the season, and it's you know wait for them to turn around, wait for them to turn around, and it still has not happened. And now being nine back, they have some major work to do if they want to be taken seriously. So, Mike, I'll start with you. What has gone wrong for the Yankees so far? Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious that the lineup is the most of the problems with this team. I mean, they're batting 234 across the board. That's the team batting average. And it's 19th in the league, which is probably weaker for the Yankees. I mean, this is a team you're expecting to be top 10 in almost every category hitting-wise coming into the year. Even at, when after you get past Judge, the lineup gets really, really weak. And it's tough for Aaron Boone to put together a lineup that you think is going to get hits. I mean, you talk about that Phillies game Sunday. They had two hits by the end of the sixth inning. And that's just insanely weak. I mean, if it weren't for DJ LeMayu, they would have had been no hit in the sixth inning. So I think these are serious problems and they, the Yankees need to address. And it's kind of shocking we're talking about the hitting as the problem because it's been the pitching for almost the entire decade of Yankee problems. But now it's the hitting. So if this lineup can't seem to get it together, it's going to be in serious trouble to even make a wild card bid at the very least. Yeah, I mean, you can't expect uh, the pitching to – to hold up to what they were pitching like earlier in the year, I think. I mean, this was obviously like, and I'm talking starting pitching, probably the weakest part of this team, at least going into the year, like we mentioned. Um, and I know that doesn't excuse um, the pitching over the weekend because the pitching over the weekend was terrible, to be honest. But um, you can't expect them to go out and really produce dominant start after start of two, three runs earned. Uh, because, I mean, this lineup at some point is supposed to just get going. This lineup is... You know, I feel like we talk about it every week. We look at this lineup and they look like they should be producing and they aren't. And, and, and I don't really know the answer as, as to why that's the case. All I know is that it's not happening. Um, and you, you can't ask this rotation to do any more than they've done so far this year, to be honest. Even with, you know, now Kluber's hurt, Severino injury. I'm, I mean, we're going to get into that, I'm sure. Those are two big losses because there's so much pressure around this lineup to produce because the lineup has been really struggling. So to me, that's a huge concern is that the pitching seems to be getting worse and the lineup isn't getting any better. So something has to give here. Either this lineup has to produce more and the, this Yankees team needs to start scoring some serious runs. But even so, you can't have a team that, that's, that either carries offensively or carries with a pitching staff. They have to be more consistent and they haven't been at all. And that's a real worry if, if they want to, let's say, win the division, which I think everyone, even maybe now, people are still thinking this Yankees team is the favorite. They should win the division. I, I think that that time is, a, a, has gone, to be honest. I think this, this AL East is a very good division. The Rays are proving themselves as right, you know, the best team in this division right now. And I don't even think it's close at the moment. Um, just looking at the standings, it isn't. I don't think this is a lock that the Yankees win this division. I was um, saying for a while, eventually they're going to turn it around just because I'm looking at this lineup and they look so, you know, it's such a good lineup on paper. Um, but the fact that they continue to struggle, they're not consistent. I don't know. I, I think the panic level is pretty high if you're a Yankees fan right now. Yeah, you brought up something, Sam, that we talked about last week. And, like, it's about the pitching because – when the offense wasn't hitting, the pitching was carrying them early in the year, right? Yeah. You know, coming off that sweep of the White Sox, they go up nine games over 500. They won five straight scoreless outings by the starting staff. And we knew that wasn't sustainable. And while they're still, they're still third in the AL and ERA, so the pitching is still a strength. But now you're seeing it flip because, you know, you take something out of the equation, they get dominated by Aaron Noah. The offense did show signs of turning around. Their last five games before that, they averaged 12 hits, six runs. They did beat up on the Twins. Even in the game they lost, they still hit. And then you saw it kind of flip, right? Chapman collapsed Thursday. You saw that game versus the Red Sox. On Sunday Night Baseball, the, bull, the bullpen blew it. We saw that game versus the Phillies where the Yankees scored seven runs. The bullpen blew it again. And so that's what's going to happen. When the bullpen was so dominant, right, 21-1 and one when leading after six. 
that's almost unheard of. That's flawless pitching out of the pen. You're going to have an overcorrection and the hitting hasn't been, it hasn't overcorrected enough to the point where it can outweigh the pitching. And that's where you're seeing the struggles because now it's even when they do pitch well, they don't hit. And even when they finally hit for the first time in a week, Domingo Herman gets shelled or someone else struggles. Tyone goes one out into the game. And that's where you see the issues. And I think it just all boils down to you have to, you have to improve this team because you talked about on paper, right? This is a good lineup. This is one of the best in the American League, best in baseball. But production-wise, 45% into the season, they're not that. DJ LeMayu has been the biggest regressor in the MLB this year. Before the home run on, um, on Saturday, he had like the ninth lowest slugging percentage in Yankees history. So he's been a complete non-factor on the plate. Clint Blazier has hit 180. He was supposed to be a starting left fielder. He was above average last year. He was a gold glove candidate. He's given you none of that this year. When you have Luke Voigt out, who led the league in homers last year, you know, you have all these things where they should be better. But at the end of the day, Rudin Odor was hitting third on Sunday. Good major league teams should not have him hitting third. I don't care who they should be, what the production is. There's just no reason he should be hitting third in a major league lineup for a competitive team. So if that's what you're rolling out there, then maybe it's not so good on paper. If that's the best you can do in the three hole, what really is this team? Like I know Judge had an off day. And he's been the one really big bright spot. He's been consistent all year. He's been huge, but Rudy Odor cannot hit three. There's just no reason that can be the case. And when he does, you see the product as he did Sunday. They can't hit. And the guys at the plate, they can't hit. And there's a reason because they're just not producing. And Odor is not a guy who could hit third. I know I just said that like three times, but when I saw that lineup mm -hmm. on Sunday, I, I, you know, I, I clinched up. I was so, so upset and the product showed. No, I, I mean, you're, you're totally correct. I mean, it's almost like Aaron Boone's searching for guys to give him a spark at this point, right. and there's just been none of that. And it, you talk about how, like, when the Yankees have had hot stretches this season, it's been because of the pitching. That's never been the history for the Yankees. It's always the hot bats where it's like two, three weeks straight. It's like either a bomb fest or gappers almost every day. And the Yankees might have three or four games of that this season, but that's been the extent to their hot hitting. And, I mean, you talked about how, like, the product's, like, really good. I just don't understand how it, the Yankees, like, it's not that they're not paying guys. I mean, they've got the fourth most highest payroll in MLB last year. And then they, I mean, they had the highest payroll in, um, last year. And then they spent the fourth most money in free agency this year. So, they've been signing guys. That's not the problem. It's just the guys they sign either, A, can't stay healthy, or, B, can't perform for a long period of time or a consistent period of time throughout a season. So when those two don't go together, you're not going to win ball games. So the Yankees need to find a formula similar to the Rays, where no matter who the Rays have out there, they win ball games. They get timely hits. They get pitchers and go six, seven innings and give you a good outing. But the Yankees don't have that. They pay guys who get hurt, and then they have to scramble to get these lineups and have to bat Rudin on door three because a quarter of the lineups hurt. So I think that's always been a problem for the Yankees, and it's just showing this year because the bats cannot consistently stay hot. Yeah, Ryan, you mentioned 45% through the season. And when I heard that, I'm like, oh, my goodness. You know, first of all, it's gone by so quickly. But second of all, like, the, the excuses for this team are over. You know, like, we're not at a point where it's a slow start. We're at a point where this is not a good team, you know, at least in the first half of the year, approaching the all-star break, whatever. Like, that, that's where I think um, the, the, uh, the excuses for this Yankees team kind of goes away because you're looking at the product on the field, like you said, and it's just not there. It's not consistent enough. It's it, they're not uh, they're not hitting to the level they have hit in the in the past. They're not hitting very well at all this year. The pitching I think has kind of returned more to normal, what we almost expected, um, you know. And then obviously, I, the, I think the Severino injury. I think that was on Saturday. On top of losing that game, um, was just like insult to injury. There. I mean, Literally. Severino. It, it would have been. Yeah, literally, exactly. Uh, you know, I mean, having he's Severino, made glass. he's made a glass at this point. Yeah, I mean, and that was the thing where this looking at this Yankees rotation going into the year, they, uh, a lot of people made the argument. Well, you know, okay, we got we got Kluber, <clears throat> we got Tyone, but Severino is going to be back, and he and he's going to help us down the stretch. I now you have no idea. First of all, when he's even going to come back, what he's going to be when he comes back. So that, that's a huge injury. Kluver was another big one because he was pitching really well. I think that was like kind of like a surprise to a lot of people that Kluver signing. A lot of people criticized it. 
he was great. Um, he was proving people wrong, and then now he's he's been hurt as well. He'll be out, so that's another big issue. This this rotation can only do so much. They're definitely going to level back down to earth, and it's time for this lineup to really pick things up if they want to stand any chance in this division because it's a quality division. The Rays are going to be staying there. Uh, we're going to talk about you know some surprises later on. Um, you know the Red Sox are another surprise. Uh, even the Blue Jays. These teams are going to be staying in it um, in the hunt down the stretch. So this Yankees team has no one to blame but themselves. They have to improve. They have to find a way to hit more consistently. And it's it's really hard to have any confidence in this team right now. I think just from an objective perspective, I certainly don't. Yeah, over their last 100 games, they're 50 and 50. So they're just like they are objectively mediocre. And you talked about Sevy. Mm-hmm. He's been a thing all year where. When a guy is coming back from Tommy John, I just don't think you can ever trust them to be there for the next two years. Like, he's someone that I, I don't even count him right now. I did it before the injury. We saw at the Mets, too. Noah Syndergaard, he's probably going to be out for the year now. He got sidelined. I know Seve's injury is unique because it was, it was a groin injury, and that's, you know, kind of a freak thing. It's not the arm and the shoulder that's been the issue. But that's something where, you know, it really sucks for Seve. Um, you hope he can get back, and we'll see. We'll see what happens there. But I think there's another really interesting point. Mike brought up the Rays. And I know that there's a lot of criticism with the Yankees roster construction and all that. But I think if you really look at it, it is just the production. Because the Rays, they lead the MLB in strikeouts, right? That's been a thing that the Yankees have been criticized for a ton. You know, leading the league in strikeouts. The walks, strikeouts, home runs, the true three outcomes, you know that. That's a thing you kill them for. The teams that do that the most this year are the Rays, Giants, and Brewers. Those are all playoff teams right now. All three are leading their division. So I don't think it's necessarily the entire philosophy. It's just the production, right? The Yankees have been top two in home runs the last three years, number one over the last four plus years, but they're 13th this year. And when you drop that and when you don't get timely hitting, it all boils up. They're hitting ground balls at a shocking rate. They have more than double, double plays of like any other team in baseball. And I think that's where it goes down to because obviously – you know, you want to have some lefties that produce. And that, I think, is the real criticism. Austin Meadows, I think I said this last show, and they haven't played a home game since, but Austin Meadows has the most home runs at Yankee Stadium by a lefty this year with two. So when you get no production from the left side of the plate and that's kind of an advantage of your ballpark, I think that's poor roster construction. But, like, no one was complaining in 2017, 18, 19 when these guys were just hitting home runs all over the place, right? Like, when they were producing, it was fun to watch, and they were hitting with the best of everyone. It was the pitching that held them back. And it's frustrating this year because once you get the confident pitching, you finally do get the ace that was holding you back. The offense falls apart, and everyone's hitting under the Mendoza line, and no one gets timely hits, and everyone grounds the double plays. And it's just kind of a snowball effect here where – they kind of have wasted the golden years of this kind of run that they have on because it's been, what, four years now where they've really had this core group of guys. They have absolutely nothing to show for it. No World Series appearances. They've came, you know, their closest was their first year where they shocked the world and were one game away from a World Series appearance. And since then, they haven't gotten back to that point. Now you're looking at Aaron Judge one and a half years out of free agency. I know there was some talk on Twitter yesterday. Somebody said they should look into trading him. If they're not serious about re-signing him, one, there's no reason that they shouldn't be serious about re-signing him. But, you know, when you've wasted his kind of whole rookie deal now, and it's not just him, right? You have Glaber Torres, Gary Sanchez, all these guys that are looming towards free agency and you have nothing to show for it. It really is a concern. And that's why I think this year, while you still have that, you have to be aggressive. You have to go out and get guys. I don't care who you're paying. I don't care if you have the second highest payroll in baseball. If you're inflated the luxury tax, you have to shatter the luxury tax. You look what the Dodgers did. They shattered it. They were rewarded with the World Series. I don't think you can worry about paying 40 cents on the dollar, whatever it is, when you're a billionaire and house sign banner. You have to look at this team. You have to talk to Brian Cashman. They have a short window here. It's not the baby bombers anymore. They have, I think, like their average age is like 29. It's like fifth best in baseball, right? They're not this young, up-and-coming team. This is – your team, and you have to add to that. And I think it starts with the lineup, right? Get some lefties in there, get a Cattell Marte, get an Adam Frazier, you know, get a guy from the left side of the plate who gives you a new dimension. And then I look at the rotation too, because we saw Herman kind of settled back into what we expected, a solid number three. He has a 3-8 ERA after getting shelled in Philly. Jordan Montgomery, you know he's not going to be spectacular. 
And with the Corey Kluber injury, you don't really have a solid number two here. So I would go for it. I really would. I would shatter the luxury tax. I would trade the prospects because I don't want to waste another year. You know, people want to fire Boone. And I think that's like, is Boone the reason that DJ isn't hitting? Is the reason Clint isn't hitting? Luke Boyd's not in here because of Boone. The thing that's frustrating with him is kind of his attitude and his press conferences. And if you believe that you can create a spark firing him, then go for it. But I think that the guys in that room like him and respect him too much to the point where that's not going to be the major spark. I just think you have to roll with him. And I don't think firing a manager midseason is any recipe for success, right? I don't want to punt 2021. The Yankees shouldn't either. They have to try to make it work at the end of the year. If you are still underperforming and Aaron Boone is at the helm, you need a fall guy. So I have no problem there. But right now I'd be aggressive. I'd go for number two starter. I'd get a bat. I'd even look at another bat in Joey Gallo. I'd get two of those three guys I just mentioned. And I would really, you know, take a look in the mirror and understand like Clint Frazier isn't hitting. Do you want to have the left field be a non-factor all year and kind of wait on him? Because I don't think you should. Brett Gardner is an absolute zero at the plate right now. I wouldn't want him starting any games for this team. So you just have to look at it with in the mirror and be objective because this isn't the same fun upstart Yankees they've been the last few years. This is a 15-50 club over the last 100 games. And they're just not performing right now, 33 and 32. I think that kind of is overperforming still. I don't think that their performance has matched that record. They are lucky to be above 500. They're lucky to be nine games out of first place right now. The way they have played, they just have to pick it up. They have to get hot and time is running out. Yeah, I think Ryan, you made some key interesting points there, but I, I don't subscribe to the belief they need to go out and get someone. I know we de- uh, disagree about this. I mean, I don't think they're one piece away. I mean, I think this line of need- multiple pieces that they should get. I just don't think that spending is the answer. I mean, you look at teams that have sold at the, in the off season that are in the first place in their division. I mean, the Rays sold and they are in the first place. They traded for relievers and prospects and they're doing really well this year. The Cubs did the same thing with Darvish. Now you can say, if they had Darvish, they might be the best team in the NL. I think that could act, honestly be an argument. Yeah, Darvish is like the number one piece that they're missing right now. A hundred percent, but they are still in first base, uh, first base, uh, first place because guys have stepped up in response. Zach Davies has been great for them. Kyle Hendricks has been on and off, but if he heats up by the end of the year, they have a nice one-two in their rotation. I just think that the Yankees' answers are in-house. How many times did the Yankees went out and spend it in the offseason, and they haven't seen like they have progressed much? I think they need to work in-house like teams like the Rays do that are beating them in their own division. I don't know how a team with less than half of your payroll, like the Rays, which have less than 50% of the Yankees' payroll, is beating you in the division. I don't think the answer would be to go out and spend. I think that's just continuing to feed into the problem. You're, you're paying for guys that either, A, don't produce, or B, aren't healthy. And I think that's what the Yankees have done. Why I mean, would you standard. keep it in-house then? If, if the guys because, they have don't produce and they're not healthy, why would you let them ride it out? Because I think that the answer is with prospects and developing that way. Guiding guys like Stanton, who have been probably played 50% of his games with the Yankees healthy, is an issue. And I think that if you go out and get a guy like Ketel Marte, who has been, in, my, um, in your defense, great for the Diamondbacks, who could be a good piece for the Yankees, there's no guarantee he performs just as good as the guys that we have right here. And I think that the Yankees' answer would to just be continue to work with the guys in-house. And that's been the problem for years. They've gone out and buy, and they haven't gotten anywhere past the ALCS in the past five years. But he's hitting 343. Like, what prospects do you want them to call up? Because that's my thing. If they had, you know, a farm system, if they had a Glaber Torres in the wings or something like that, that's one thing. But this is not a good farm system anymore. All those guys that were the baby bombers that look towards the future, they're now on this team and not hitting. And you don't have the capital you once had. There's no answers in AAA right now. You know, you're calling up a Chris Giddens, a 27-year-old journeyman to hit six for you, right? There's no answer in-house. And I don't think you said they're not one piece away. I didn't say, like, they need to go out and get multiple guys. You can't waste this year. I don't trust these guys who aren't performing, as you said, and are injured to just flip a switch. I could tell Marte was hitting 343. There's no reason that he should just fall off. I would trust him to hit more than I trust a Clint Frazier right now. I trust an Adam Frazier more than a Clint Frazier or a Brett Gardner right now. So I would go and get multiple guys. You know, there's no prospect in AAA who's going to be a solid number two. If a Max Scherzer is available in the last year of his deal, a Kyle Gibson, you go out and get them. You're going to trust Corey Kluber to come back? I'm not. Debbie Garcia has a six ERA right now in AAA. You're going to trust him to fill in that rotation spot? I'm not. I think they have to be aggressive here. I will say this here. You guys are going to cut you off for a second. I think we're talking about 
with this Yankees team, if I were a player, let's say on, on, a, <clears throat> on a team like Arizona, and I know they're not winning right now, or any of these teams that are looking to deal players, coming into New York is a very tricky situation right now. They aren't playing well. There's a ton of pressure around this team. Aaron Boone has faced a lot of uh, a lot of controversy of the way he's answering questions, over the way he's dealing with this team losing games. There's a lot of pressure in New York in general, but there's even more right now because, like you said, Ryan, the window is closing and, and things are starting to fall apart here for this Yankees team as all these rookie contracts are going to be gone. So it's a little tricky to just say Cattell Marte will fit in this spot mm -hmm. because you don't really know how a guy is going to play in an environment like New York in a situation they're in right now where there's a ton of pressure around this team. There's a ton of pressure to win right now and turn things around like immediately. So for me, that's another element you kind of have to add into this. I don't think the answer is in-house. Like you said, I think it's, it's a tricky situation because they do need more than one piece. But is this Yankees team, is this organization really willing to go out and get more than one piece at the deadline? That's my question. I don't, I don't think they are. Right now. But I'd say the thing that I would say, and this is also to Ryan, is that are you willing to unload a majority of your top farm system Absolutely. and maybe deep reliever guys for one or two years to gamble. I mean, I don't think the Yankees are two or three pieces away from contending with the Dodgers, the Padres, or the White Sox. I really don't think so. I mean, this team is lucky, like you said, to be above 500. And even if you get Ketel Marte and maybe a serious starter, are they better than the Dodgers and Padres? And if the goal is to win World Series, I don't see the answer is to rushing right now to go grab two or three guys and unloading a bunch of farm system guys that is a huge gamble to make and I'm not willing to do that if I'm in the Yankees position and I think that if you are and if you think that this roster is good enough to be two or three pieces away from making a push for the playoffs then that's one move but I'm not of the belief that the Yankees are even one or two pieces let alone three pieces away from even pushing for the wild card I think even if you get a Cato Marte and a serious starter it's still going to take a lot to outpush the Blue Jays and the Red Sox for that it's still division. Going to take, it's still going to take the starters to produce more. It's still going to take the guys take... in-house to play better. That's the thing. And that's why it's a little bit of a risk, because you still need those guys to produce. If that doesn't happen, you're not making the playoffs. It's yeah, true. Sam, exactly that. I mean, it's, even if you get Cattell Marte, you need, eight of, you need seven of the eight positional players to still come and hit every single day. And if you get one starter, you need the other three or four guys to still be there. I know Cole might be – a lock, but even if you get another starter that's going to give you six, seven innings and two earned runs, maybe each start, you still need two or three guys that are going to perform. And like guys like Paxton, the Yankees have signed who have come to New York and have not done well. Pitching in New York is a completely different thing. And if you get a guy transplant someone to this roster midseason with all this pressure, he's going to get killed by the New York media. So it's no guarantee that he's the guy you trade for. So for all those reasons, I don't see, like, what are the Yankees rushing to do? If you happens in-house and the talent you have can turn it around midseason, then, of course, that is a huge W for the Yankees. But to go out and buy and unload farm system guys, to go rush for a, a season that is basically almost, you're already, it's looking, there, looking like in the rearview mirror of the playoffs right now, I'm not willing to do that if I'm in the Yankees position. Ryan, maybe you are, but that might just be where we differ. Yeah, I mean, I actually just think you made my point for me because we've established that the Yankees have a short window here, right? So it's not rushing trading these farm system guys to go out and get help. It's using your window and understanding that you can win now, right? The Yankees still have talent. And obviously, if they go and get a Cattell Marte, they're going to still need their guys to produce. They're not going to win anyway if they're not going to produce. So, you, you know, what, what, what are we doing here? Like, but you don't think you'd lose 5, 10 years down the line if you unload a bunch of picks, then you're constantly buying or buying. It's a constant cycle. Think the Cubs are great trading Glaber Torres for Old Chapman and winning a World Series? No. The no, Yankees they don't, don't even have a role. not been very good right now. And the Yankees don't have a Glaber Torres in the farm system. I think that's your point. All the guys they have that are touted, Mike, are four or five years down the line in their ETA to come up. And so are you going to wait till Aaron Judge is a $40 million player? Are you going to yeah, wait The Cubs were a much different team in 26 are you going to wait right until now. you're paying Stan and Judge a combined 80 million dollars plus Garrett Cole plus a Glaber Torres plus a Luke Voigt for these farm system guys to come up like is that that's irresponsible to me and to just punt on this year like you just said if you don't believe they are two or three pieces away then how are zero pieces the answer how how can three pieces not give this team maximize their ability to win but how can zero pieces and not add anything 
be the answer. I think you have to go aggressive here. You have to be all out. And just being complacent and sitting on this roster when it's been 100 games of 500 baseball is not the answer. You know, to just look at it like, oh, it's the New York media. He's probably going to collapse is I also think kind of irresponsible because then what's the point of anything? What's the point of ever acquiring guys outside the organization if they're just going to crumble, right? It's not like everyone just immediately collapses. What was the point of signing a DJ LeMayu? That was a move that was criticized at the time. Has he been in the the lights? Absolutely. A guy like Max Scherzer, you think he's going to cave to the bright lights of New York? He's been in World Series. He's pitching the biggest games. I'm not worried about that. And I don't think that's a reason you don't make a move. I think to just look at the New York aspect and be like, oh, well, you know, he might, he has, he's going to be under pressure, so he's going to collapse. I think that is not fair when you're hitting 343 with a 918 OPS. So that is why I would personally, I just think you have to go out and make moves. And they're not one move away, but three or four, are that, is that going to help and maximize their chances while they have this core under contract and at their prime? Yes, it is. But I mean, my, my response would be, do you think there's six or seven positional players, even with the one or two you're adding, that are going to perform well enough to take them to the playoffs? I mean, right now it's no guys. And that's why I'm saying, I mean, Judge, I mean, Andujar is hitting very well now. I mean, certain guys are heating up. Rochelle is looking a little better. But there's still a not enough talent there, in my opinion, that it's even two or three uh, pieces away at the very most. And that's why I don't believe that giving up a farm system – is enough is is worth it enough to try and capitalize on this window? I don't I don't think the Yankees have the roster enough to even make a push for the playoffs, even if you get like a Kittel Marte at the very best. I don't see a scenario where you get both him and Scherzer, and I think that could be dreaming. But if that happens, then that would be a huge move for the Yankees. But unless you get two dominant guys, like I don't think the roster is there enough to be able to pick up guys like Kittel Marte and expect them to now suddenly leap the Red Sox and raise in this division. So do you want to blow it up then? Because then I feel like what's the point of even, what's the point of going half in, half out when you have these guys in their prime? That's, that's, I, mean, I don't think, I mean, it's mid season. It's not like it's an off season right now and you have to blow up in the off season. I think that if you let these guys try to figure it out and then you can reevaluate at the end of the year, that's one thing, but to scramble right now and then unload draft picks and then not even make the playoffs would be awful for the Yankees. All right. Um, we just spent a lot of time on the Yankees. I hate to, I hate to play a host here, but we do have another team in New York. Yeah, 